Hey guys, Tyrup here bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on fields of Wernickendonk. Playing for today's morning in the north, we have Captain Bow Wow playing as Soviets who has armored assault, mechanized support, and shock rifle frontline. Teaming up with him is William H. Harrison. Thanks to his forces, straight away locking into heavy cavalry here. In the south, we have Toy Vendor playing as Osir who has a spearhead. And finally, Pineapple, the fruit dude, playing as OKW, who has elite armor, look off for ground forces, and breakthrough. Rankings here uh, allies around rank 110, arrange team versus Axis around rank 70. So, slight edge to the Axis. No combat yet. Both sides capping up. We've got a tier 1 start here from Bow Wow. He sent his first combat engineer out to cap. Second one to build the tech structure. So it's generally like the fastest way of getting things done. Recommended order. But has missed the timing for an M3 quite badly. So yeah, a slight mistake there. There we go, come engineers getting chased off. Can't do much against Sturmpires in the early game. So the squad's going to try sneak around onto the cutoff and uh, surprise surprise there's actually some sandbags over there at the moment. They almost move their way into heavy cover. Sturmpires I thought might be coming around the corner for a flank but not the case and this squad are getting bullied out of the capture circle. Taking cover. Speaking of bullied riflemen in the north doing some uh, good work up there. Machine gun can't quite get in position. And here we go, Stem Pioneers coming round and now for the flank. I'm hunting for those penals. And they are getting on their bicycle, going around the fence, getting out of there. Trying to maintain distance against Stem Pies. And in comes the M3. Well timed by Captain Bow Wow. There's so many squads here. M3 could probably just get forced off by small arms pretty easily. Oh, very early mortar team from Toy Vendor. I think that's a little bit of a mistake playing against Rifeman this early on. What, what is the mortar team going to do? I don't think there are any like, particularly troublesome buildings on this map. So the, the early mortar team seems like a poor choice given what he's facing. Can comes the M3. These two squads, happy to trade from behind heavy cover though. I think there's, I think there's only like three, maybe four penal shooting out of that, so it's not the full strength, full six men. The enemy is taking our territory. It's actually a reasonable trade. Oh, here comes a squad with a flamer though, penal cycling out. Stumpai is working around the corner though, maybe looking to finish this off with small arms damage. Almost closing the distance, in comes the Flamer, but the M3 getting a little bit too low. Stumpai is looking to chase it down. It looks like the M3 is going to be able to back away. Either way, pretty well diffused by Pineapple the Fruit Dude, keeping his units in uh, close proximity to each other. M3 not doing too much damage. Back on the other side, Toy Vendor really struggling. I feel like that early mortar team was just a huge mistake. Three out back being repaired. Penals win that fight from behind in light cover. Good combat over the center. Lieutenant squeezes past the MG42, and once again, Toy Vendor been caught short. Having a tough start to the match. 2v1 over here. Train throw getting 2v1. position again. Not able to get any shots off. You can see how badly that's hurt him so far this match. Very poor map control because of that early mortar team for no reason. Okay, we've got a M20 coming out for William Harrison. 
upgrading them with the skirts as well. So two light vehicles for the allies. Back the other way, Pineapple the Fruit Dude has gone for battle group, so no looks, no Puma. That could be a big problem. Here's what they're currently facing. Really need some light vehicles of their own to help fight back. Especially on a map like this, which is, you know, it's reasonably large for 2v2. Hard to cover all that territory. Oh wow, he's gone for the flat half track, okay. Little bit risky. Fast here on the M20. Well, because while the M3 is still alive, you can just get a squad of penals with PTRs, just chuck them in the scout car and then just dive on top of the flak half track, get a sticky satchel off, and that's GG. So, generally, I don't recommend a flak half track while the M3 is still alive. It really works out. Very hard to keep it uh, safe, even using the smoke on the flak half track. Doesn't really help you out that much. Speaking of penals with PTRS, there goes one. And 20 coming back in. Looks like Toy Vendor has managed to branch out to the fuel though. Get it captured for a decent chunk of time. Some mine there for Captain Bowwell. Big rifle push. Oh, M20 in a bit of trouble in front of the flak half track. Takes a good chunk of damage. Now pulling away. Still that mine there as well, remember, from Pineapple. And here we go. Infantry pouring forwards. I had this mine, M20 coming around the corner. Here comes the flak half track though. Pineapple floating way too much manpower at the moment. He went for like a fast tick with only three squads. But you need to make up for that by going for things like a fast... Ooh! Back half track, trying to set it up. Oh, he reset it up. Oh, activated the handbrake though. Well done. Squad went down. Uh, squad of Fox Grenade is on retreat. Well, the flak half track could be in a little bit of trouble if it takes a snare. We've got two squads available with the AT grenades now after... That one just hit V1. The calf track trying to back itself into a corner. Maybe he can it get the suppression off here. Resigned to his fate. He's going to take one sneer. Lieutenant in the building. No bazooka being upgraded. But just the small arms. And there we go. Another squad hitting V1. Another AT grenade. That's probably going to be it. I think at some stage he probably should have just set the flak half track up in this corner, hope to stop the squads coming in. Because uh, running it away was not going to work out there. Especially with so little support. But it, what I was trying to say before all that action happened was Pineapple you know, went for that fast tick, but then uh, was floating like 700 manpower. Didn't have the support weapons, should have had like a raketon, should have had a machine gun. Quickly after building his tick taking advantage of uh, ticking up quickly but that wasn't the case he paid uh, the ultimate price there lost his stern pioneers as well so he's right back to the stone age now it's almost no units and the axe is just getting run completely off the map here pineapple still floating now finally getting one machine gun Unlucky that he hasn't seen like a fast T70 from Captain Bow Wow. Bow Wow's gone for two squads of guards instead. T70 could probably honestly end the game here. Max is completely unprepared for it. So we're gonna see a double 222 play from Toy Vendor, but look, the second one's coming out 10 minutes super super late. And 222's not particularly good against guards either. I don't know, envision this going well. Generally the flame of half track much better against guards because you can put the pool of flames down then back away and 
guard to take the damage. On your flame half tracks at a safe range. Ah, going for a flame half track would be quite risky. Could easily get overrun by your opponent's light vehicle. So I can understand going for double two two twos, but. Right, they're a little bit late, but once again, lucky that Captain Bauer has not gone for a fast T70. Oh, fast on the M3. Machine gun setting up, pinnings just out of the arc. Should get away safe. Oh, that is quite a range is from William. Quite a heavy investment into infantry. Pineapple did go for his tech truck. It looks like he's going to try to put that down now. That's pretty much the amount he needs to upgrade it after the tech completes as well. So it should be pretty safe. Yeah, look at this mortar. Still only one kill. It's been on the field for like eight minutes or something. Such a bad decision. Now Torvinda investing into a pack. Never a terrible idea. Is that a rebuilt M20? He did lose that, right? Ooh, speaking of M20, there's an M20 mine there. Be disastrous. Are these two, two, twos. Currently trying to use them separately, which is uh, quite taxing on the micro. Just nice to see toy vendor with the sweeper as well. Respecting the twenty mines. Machine gun seeing up an awkward angle here. Not going to cover the squad of guards coming in from the side. Tip truck up. Not quite upgraded yet though. Ooh, we're kidding here. M3 gets away though. And I think the Stern Pioneer is going to win this. A little bit too healthy. Could even get wiped. Maybe this Flamer. Oh, he didn't chase. And the Flamethrower is going to get away very, very close. Maybe if he chased the Stern Pies, would have got it. Upgraded with the Panzer Authorization now. Yeah, these double 222s not working out too well so far. Been on the field for about three, three, and a, three or four minutes. Got three kills between them. Double guards countering them quite effectively. Should have here yeah, Major and uh, Sherman coming in for William Harrison. A lot of manpower for both of the Allied players. Maybe afford to put down a cash, even. But the Axe is really struggling for fuel control so far as match. They are way behind in that department. Trying to bait 222 over those mines, but not falling for the bait yet. Guards coming in from the side over here. Green is upgraded for LMGs now. Starting to fight back quite effectively against the riflemen. They really need to get some bars going. But he has been using all of his munitions on those mines. So he doesn't even have munitions for a, for a bar at the moment. Sherman on the field. Some good damage coming after this 222. It's backing away. No pack nearby. And down it goes. Pack not quite in position. And once again, Axis without any fuel point to their name. Second Raketon for Pineapple. I think that's a good choice, knowing that I'm going to be up against a couple early mediums from the Allies and need to have double AT guns to help counter them. The field. 
Let's see a good heads up play. The overs now as well. Two squad overs in fact. Does have you know a little bit more room in his army than you usually would, having lost so many units before. Was in a bit of trouble. Double uh, mediums in the middle. Pack nearby. Getting a couple hits in. Sherman low now has to back away. In fact, double T-34s for Captain Bow Wow. Interesting choice. It was uh, all retreat then, buddy. Paying attention. So the M20 went down and so does the Sherman. The kitten coming in from base, finishing the job. And the Obers go down on the other side. Drop the LMG as well. Does there have a squad of Obers nearby that could come and uh, pick that up though? It looks like he's come across to do just that. But yeah, William Harrison getting way too aggressive. Sherman was already on half health and he goes in for a dive. Oh boy. Kitten finds his retreat in T-34. Might be able to get the kill here. Let's go for the attack round, I think. Oh, very, very close. Nicely attempted. But yeah, yeah. getting aggressive when your tank's already on half health. Just a wee bit too risky, unless you are well aware of where everything is. If you've got like a recon run up or something like that. Maybe then, but otherwise just super risky stuff. Especially in 2v2, where... Your enemy's teammate could come across with an AT gun, and that's exactly what happened there. A kitten assist from Pineapple, the fruit dude, saving the day. Both vehicles down for William Harrison. He's gone for a second squad of rear echelon as well, which is a curious choice. I'd expect maybe a machine gun. at the moment you know he's got all these riflemen no weapon upgrades they're just helpless long range against the LMG Grenadiers but maybe 50 cal can help turn the tides in those long range engagements bring it in get some suppression he really needs a machine gun rather than another very echelon I'm not sure why he got this at all honestly don't know if we've seen any tellers so far doesn't really need another sweeper if you're going to get bazookas, maybe it would make more sense to get a squad of rangers, get those super zooks. This commander, he's going for a second squad of rangers as well, by the way. Very heavy infantry army from William Harrison. It looks like now he's going to start save, saving towards the Pershing. 34 is just about ready to rumble. We're seeing a flak panzer coming in for toy vendor. Right. I mean, it's a pretty good option against all this infantry. Gonna need a second AT gun, of course, to deal with the Persian once that arrives, but it's not for quite some time. Just see how crucial uh, losing that Sherman was. William Harrison really opened the door for this Flak Panzer to be effective from Toy Vendor. T34 is running down the middle. Pack from the side, double Rakitans from the other side. Grenade onto the Rakitan though, prevents him from firing. Concussive grenade, forcing away the guards. Grenade in, grenades exchanged. Nexus retreating. Black Panzer opening up on the other side. Backed up by the 222. And now we have a cash down by the way. Oh! 222 hit one of those M20 mines. Another one over here. There's the sweeper around for 12 into there. Now the Axis may be uh, starting to nudge ahead a little bit. In terms of fuel control, got this one under control. Starting to put pressure on the other side as well. A squad of Shreks as well. 
decent option to help counter these vehicles. Going in for the crush is Captain Bow Wow. Well timed retreat by Toy Vendor. Doesn't need a single uh, model crushed. Now we've got a recon plane up from Toy Vendor. And a second pack. As I said, you know, he does need the second pack up against the Pershing in uh, the not too distant future. I think this is. Oh! Accidentally triggers a uh, mine there. Bit of good fortune. The flag bands are, you know, very well equipped to deal with all this infantry. William H. Harrison, as I said, didn't get bazookas on any of his uh, ranges. Doesn't have any AT guns, so he's just helpless in the face of this flak panzer. Uh, here comes a Panzer IV for Pineapple the Fruit Dude. I was not expecting a Panzer IV from him. Not this super late. I was thinking maybe he's going to go for the Panther, which I think would have been the uh, smarter choice. Panther with heat rounds up against the Pershing, it's a very effective counter. It's got the Obers, you know, double Obers for dealing with infantry. Nice to beef up his anti-tank a little bit, I think. So I feel like that's a slight mistake. He's got the Panzer Commander upgrade on it as well, by the way. Here we go. Oh, AT gun connecting. Now he's going in after the T-34. Now he's backing away. Looking for one more long range shot, but doesn't quite get the reload off in time. Oh boy, Raquette and Forgotten About going to be turned over. Range is just ripping through it. And that's one way for William Harrison to get an anti-tank gun. He's not coming forward to pick it up in the pack. Tricks. Or connecting with the T-34, forcing away no uh, this either from Captain Bow Wow. So those allies, they do really need an anti-tank gun. I think that's greedy not trying to pick it up with the rangers. It looks like he might not get punished for it. Christian going in after the Panzer IV. Behind the trees, might need to attack ground. No. Oh, but it's abandoned. In comes a Stug, trying to activate the target weak point, but doesn't quite uh, get it off in time. Activated the uh, combined arms as well, by the way. Getting aggressive, coming in. If you can get the double snare off on the Stug, that could be the end of the Stug. Especially if he crewed that Rakitten. And brought that in for some support. Cast a grenade onto the Rangers. They're sticking around, those Stern Pioneers have to retreat. Pershing still on the warpath. We've got fragmentation bombs coming in though. Guys have to pull back. Pershing could or should stick around, finish off that D crew Panzer IV, maybe even stick around and kill the AT gun. It comes back in for the P4. And then backs away. Okay, fair enough. Look at the fight back from the Axis. So much more map control. Double fuel, the majority of the VPs. Just uh, some smart team we've been playing from them so far. Climbing their way back into the game. As the uh, allies try and save for their big boys, the heavies. Up in Bow Wow, not too far away from the 152 now. Looks like he's going to be the one picking up the Rakitten. One area where the allies are also lacking is the indirect fire. No this, no this barrage, no mortars, nothing in that department, so... Outmaneuvering team weapons does rely on doing some daring plays, getting some flanks off, things like that. Trap. 
Four come forwards, but pack is there. Here comes the Pershing though. Got the Stug there in support. Uh, Flak Panzer in some trouble. Stug trying to get target weak point off here, but Pershing gets behind the trees. Flak Panzer. Oh, a bit of blocking by the Stug. Pershing needs to get one more shot in. There we go. Flak Panzer destroyed. A T gun. Having trouble. Pershing all oh, running away. No uh, munitions for a snare on that anymore. It looks like the Pershing is going to get away. Stug unable to chase. Toy Vendor just uncertain of which way to point his pack. It was uh, not relevant during that engagement because of that. Oh, Stern Tiger from Pineapple. Wow, three re echelon. William H. Harrison. Yes, he just wants turbo repairs on the Pershing. Curious decision. Mortar in trouble. Pack is there, but. Yeah, not enough. Good target weak point, but a little bit too slow. And here comes the big bruiser for Captain Bowwell. The pack there, right in front of the 152. Here comes the Sturm Tiger. Nearly finished reloading. Oh, just one shot to the pack. Full strength though. So he's coming across the Soviet infantry. I don't know if he's going to be able to shoot through that. Looks like he can. One kill, a decent amount of damage. Not an incredible start. And Toy Vendor going for another Flak Panzer. Curious choice. I thought he would try and save for the Tiger at this stage instead. Flak Panzers and Stugs though. But the Allies, despite their dominating performance in the early game, actually very far behind in terms of victory points. Very little contention over this point here is what's put them so far behind. So uh, Axis, you know, despite being quite far behind for most of this game, I feel like they're about to uh, take over a little bit here. Similar army sizes now between the two. Ooh, there we go. Penal's unable to make it out of there. First wipe for the Sturm Tiger. Stug trading with the Pershing and the pack from the side. 152 pushing forwards. Booby trap on the point. He's got the sweeper there. Why is he running away from it? The sweeper. Oh, he's going to go repair the uh, T-34, okay. But yeah, Axis capping on the far VP. Allies really need to uh, reassess their priorities. Take a look at the KD at the moment. See the Axis actually positive and the Allies in the negative. Ketan could be in trouble here. Oh, it pops the retreat. Stoom Tiger line up a shot. It's it rip, and there we go. Ketan unable to get away in time. Might have been able to do it for his full health, but it was not. Oh. Pushing up to Vet 2. Double Stugs are there, though. Once again, no AT guns, no bazookas for William H. Harrison. To really handle those tricks effectively. Let's see where this pack though. I'm probably going to get the D crew. Stone Tiger, 10 seconds left on the reload. So I don't think he's going to be able to get the steel off. Could this Doom Tiger maybe get the wipe on these? Okay, Jackson's going to be the choice for him. 
tank back up. Some Tiger. Oh, taking some rear armor shots. Pershing back there as well. Oh, space launch. Doom Tiger rocket. <laughs> and there it comes down. Stunning his own pants full. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. P4 man. Bit of bad luck there getting penetrated from the T34 frontally. T34 doesn't make it home though. Jackson with a main gun crit. The Wushtug's coming across. Squad looking for a snare. Can't find it. But uh, not enough infantry support here for... Toy Vendor. So can't afford to get aggressive going for the kill on any of these low health allied tanks. But yeah, you hear that? Allies down to 100, they need to get a wriggle on. Their VP control has been very poor this game, considering how well they've been doing. Away by the flappy. Maintaining good VP control. Allies finally branching out to the far side, but double overs heading over in that direction. He did lose both his T-34s, so he doesn't really have like a mobile tank to shut down this elite axis infantry on the far flanks anymore. Oof. Oh, a lot of shots connecting with the 152 double Stugs coming in. He's very slow to react here. It's quite a lot of damage, but in comes the Jackson. And the Pershing. Stugs a little bit low. There's the pet for Toy Vendor that's coming in. Flak Pans are super low. Pershing wants to finish the job. Briefly stopped there. Got stuck against the trees. Allowed the Persian to finish the job. Persian going in for the Stugs now. This one spinning around facing the wrong direction. Smoke on top of the other one. P3 Persian in some trouble. Good. Target weak point on the Jackson. Oh, and it goes down. Stug finishing the job now. Lining up some shots on the Jackson. Stug misses the killing blow. SU-85 coming in. Stug in trouble. Pack from the side. SU-85 chasing in with the focus sight. Moving very slowly. Not going to be able to get the kill there. So some uh, big losses there. Pershing going down the Vet 3 Pershing for William Harrison. And uh, the Allies actually quite far away another tank in terms of fuel. That was a very costly loss. But I think Toy Vendor now is saving up for the Tiger. 30 fuel away. in control of two VPs though, only down to 50. They need to pay full attention to that, which is pretty hard. They've got one machine gun co covering the center. Two one on the far flank as well. If we take a look at army sizes after that last engagement, allies do appear to be ahead, but toy vendor so yes, that tiger will even things up quite a lot. Made in. So 
One thing we haven't seen much use of so far is the Mark vehicle from Captain Bow Wow. I don't think we've seen any buttons either, so he's got so much munitions to spare at the moment. Flakbase doing a lot of damage to those two squads, but there they go. Jackson coming in, but the AT gun and the Stug is there. That's probably going to be the end. No, the pack missed a shot. Can the Stug chase in? Is it fast enough? Yes! And there we go. He dropped the artillery. Oh, and the major artillery come down as well. That's enough to knock out the eight tech truck. But uh, it's out to be a pretty even trade, honestly. After the Jackson goes down. Oh, <laughs> a bit too LMG overs, these conscripts. Not gonna last long. Even with this 7 man upgrade. Grenade in, oh late dodge, but he did retreat. If he didn't, he definitely would have lost the squad. We do make it home because of that. Here we go. Panther for pineapple the fruit dude. Must have popped out just before the HQ went down. This is what I was hoping for all along. The heat shells out great as well. Oh, with so many bounces on the 152, he's getting pretty lucky. Panther has to be like very, very uh, high chance to penetrate there. That vehicle was popped on the Panther. We can't play enough for Toy Vendor. Oh, Faust. 152. Here's the big boy, the tiger for toy vendor. William Harrison, 30 fuel away from another Pershing. Could be a slow 30 fuel, no fuel control for them at the moment. And uh, the points are draining against the Allies down to 41 now. Just chucking some rifles into the center, hoping to get the cap off. Some range for an AT grenade. Here comes the SR-85, Tiger backing away. And then comes the Rakitin as well, Tiger taking a lot of damage. Stug going after the SR-85 though, trying to come in from the side. Greedy's coming forward, threatening the Faust. 152 with the damaged engines there, switching over to AP ammo now. Looks like the Stug pulls back. Kitten doesn't get any shots off. Oh, but the 152 connects just in the nick of time, and down goes the Stug. Marking and targeting of vehicles is now available. And it gets polished off by the uh, Rakitten there. Two stolen Rakittens, by the way, for Captain Bow Wow. Could be a good time to get some uh, air spines down on the far VPs. Oh, there we go. Is that toy vendor thinking the same thing? Okay, bombs coming in, pretty well dodged by the machine gun. And once again, Captain Bauer has enough for T-34 to operate on the far flanks. So he can help deal with those Obers. But does have to be careful with it now, he's up against the Panther. Maybe afford to get a few mines down, cover the uh, T-34's retreat paths. Here comes a wave of OKW troops. Guards need to get out of there. Could even go down if he's a little bit unlucky here. Ooh. 
5-2. Get the back up to full as well. I guess still requiring some repairs though, but slowly getting that back up. Guys are draining out a little bit more, down to 25 now. Things are getting very tense for them. That's going on mine there with the Panther. He's got the Panzer Commander upgrade on that, so without a uh, machine gun upgrade, Panther pretty terrible against infantry. Another recon plane up for Toy Vendor. back there, I don't think that hit anything. Pushing any takes one shot from the pack there. That's trying to hold the line here against the double overs. Oh, in comes a second squad of guards though. It is using our firing positions as well. Rising his chances. But no, the others are too strong. T34 not quite up to full. A little lull in the action here. Okay, here comes the Tiger coming down the far side. Do worry a little bit about William Harrison's anti tank. Still never got any bazookas. It's just it's such a huge mistake. How many radiation on he's got as well? Let's see a teller going down, so that could be trouble for the Pershing. It does have one sweeper, but it could very easily get forced off. Chuck's going in a bit of trouble. Pershing chasing in. Stug is there though. Oh, did he lost the Shrek squad there. The Pershing on the move, getting a monster hit. Bad luck for Toy Vendor. Okay, Looks like tanks coming across from Captain Bow Wow as well. Maybe a 2v1 forming on uh, Toy Vendor here. He's got to be careful. Have to coming across now to support Pack also get himself into a relevant position. Another T-34 coming in for Captain Bow Wow. A little bit surprising. I thought we might see Kachusha at this stage. So many support weapons around for the Axis. Plenty of uh, good targets for it. Where he has maybe enough anti-tank between his SU-85 and all the kittens, but we'll have to wait and see. He's going down the middle with the focus sight. Mark vehicle as well. Panther takes a walloping. Pushing in pressure on the Tiger on the other side. Axis getting forced all the way back, but they still have so many VPs to work with. Can't play back the other way now as well. And good hit in. Vet 3 on that now. Oh, and the target weak point. Oh boy. Nice you taking a pummeling from this solo vetted pack. Shows you how important it is to keep those vetted up. Keep them alive, very important. Oh, Pershing hit the teller. Uh, Tiger mobilizing. So is the Stug. The recon plane was up not that long ago. But it looks like he's not chasing in for the kill. Oh, 
Oh, double over. Oh, no. Over and Fox coming in from the side. Flanking the machine gun. That's getting ripped apart. Oh, D crude even. Oh, but the monster shot from the 152 long range. It was. Ooh, take another shot. Almost go down. Has vehicles at the moment. I'm not shooting at any of this infantry. Our work kittens are there. Oh, Panther's got to be careful. Looks like he popped the heat rounds there, but. Doesn't find uh, any room to get the shots off. Pershing doing a risky move. The kitten right there. So is the pack. So is the second pack, actually. Back in and hold the line, trying to avoid all these. Oh, the target weak point over here from Pineapple results in the Persian going down. And once again, William H. Harrison not giving full respect, but maybe you pull back with the Pershing after taking you know two shots. He uh, keeps it in there, and then the target weak point allows the access to get the kill on it. That's a big deal, especially when we've got a big boy coming back the other way, the King Tiger for Pineapple. Could this be the Axis taking back the match? It's got the uh, highly vetted Obers now, they sprint around, so good for capping up the map. The booby traps as well, which we've seen kind of we use a few times. And uh, gets the wipe there. Back to victory now as well, got that range bonus. This one becomes a real weapon. And uh, looks like William Harrison gonna go for a Jackson now. I said though, really needs to get some bazookas. Got the resources for them. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Cross a tick uh, captain and get an AT gun. But yeah, dealing with the tiger is going to be a little bit tricky. KT coming through the middle. The Roy Kittens and SU-85 moving in on it though. Mark Vehicle. And quick to retreat. As soon as the Mark Vehicle is activated. Kitten opening up on the 152. Oh, Stug. In a bit of trouble. No snare on it though. Jackson getting some good hits in, but a lot of bleed for William Harrison. Oh, it's infantry while all this is going on. 152 coming in from the side. Oh, it's going to lose a rifle here. There it goes, but engine damage onto the flak panzer. I think even the 152 will be able to finish that note. It's the Jackson. Tiger and Stug chasing in. Hoping to catch the Jackson. down smoke no that's a recon plane in fact should be smoke that's on the far flank can tiger coming across now as well both of them back up to full it's ready fire pushing forwards vet 2 nearly vet 3 on that there we go, well timed AT grenade, results in engine damage, S-85 coming forwards, but the pack is there, could we see another target weak point action, yes, no, but it missed, the shot missed, good attempt though, it didn't miss, that probably would have been the S-85 dead. Let's 
Johnson coming back in. Still going to have to pull back now, especially with the Shriek squad coming forwards. Oh, Stuttgart getting a few parling hiccups there. And Jackson's still chasing down. Just to come forward, threaten this near with the Grenadiers. Oh, but he doesn't have the munitions for it. Stug and Tiger just going to try hold their ground. Tiger switching targets accidentally. Might have cost him the Stug there. Tiger briefly switched targets to the infantry. It was non prioritized vehicles. At least he got the Jackson for the troubles. That's a good trade overall. Jackson significantly more expensive than the Stug. In the Allies, you know, with no fuel points under their control, with Harrison very uh, low on fuel. We lost so many tanks. Two Pershings, two Jacksons. 14 VPs left for the Allies, though. They are in a bit of trouble. In comes the Panther with the heat rounds equipped. Going for a 1v1. Yes, ready to fire, but in come the double raquettes from the side, and Panther pulling back now. Oh, oh, raquette bounces. Can be. No. They vetted up. I think that vetted raquette. It's the extra rate of fire. Just enough to take down the Panther. I think he should have maybe have just committed. Gone in for the S-35 and hoped to come out around this way. Also, I mean, he might have died either way, but I think. It's a safe choice. Do we see him activate Blitz as well? I don't think we did. Oh, slight mistakes. Big bundle grenades. Just trying to get the cap off here. Trying to finish off the Allies. 14 VPs left. What's it stalled? These double raquettes, what a headache they have been for the Axis so far. Such a big mistake turning those over. Typically that's a formation that maybe you would want to drop coordinate barrage on. No, he's gone for a walking Stuka barrage on them instead. Oh, pretty well targeted. Grazing damage. Raquettes getting low. King Tiger maybe could decrease the low health one. And does. Oh, what a fresh S-35 coming in now. King Tiger needs to get out of there. A little low mark vehicle on it as well. I think we'll go down to one more shot. S-35 not chasing him for it. That's why I think Captain Bauer has been a little bit too slow sometimes activating his mark vehicles. If you've uh, got a lot of munition speed, you might as well activate it early on in the fights. But yeah, losing two Rakittens, that's a big deal for the Allies. They were leaning the most pretty hard against uh, the Nexus tanks. The booby trap going off, Conscript's nearly dead, will almost certainly die to the squad of Obers over here. 11 VPs left for the Allies, they're charging into the center as well. This one neutralized, clock stalled at 10. And Ogres do indeed finish off the conscripts, those booby traps working uh, their magic for Pineapple. Okay, now we've got some bazookas. William Harrison. Here they come, that's a lot of handout anti tank. Tiger takes a good chunk of damage. Ooh! 2 just got a wipe there, I think. Okay, I think he knocked out some pioneers with a scatter shot on it there. The the Allies swarming in the center. Looking for control. Engine damage onto the 152. There's a walking Stuka barrage, maybe targeting the guards. He pops out firing positions and dodges it nicely. Okay, awareness from Bow Wow.
four on the flanks once again, chasing away the overs, but no vet one. Can't use secure mode, nothing to cap over there. Oh, Stug's making their move, going after the 152, but Jackson and SU85 there for the backup. One of these Stugs could go down if the Jackson has sight, but he doesn't. Switch his targets to the Tiger. Now he has to back away. He can go down the turn. Stug chasing in, thinking about going in for it. Sides against. Middle, but so is the SU85. There we go. Early mark vehicle onto the King Tiger, forcing it away instantly. From the SU85 sight as well, so he doesn't need to be on focus sight mode. He can just chase in. Back though, to safe timing. He doesn't want to run into another Tiger weak point. They've been so effective so far this match. Whoa, a Puma from Pineapple the Fruit Dude. Doesn't want to rebuild his tech structure. The heat rounds equipped. T34 can just hide behind the uh, shot blockers here, though. Oh, another T34 on the flank. In his days, maybe numbered. Next, T34 not in good position to chase here. The Puma gets away. Uh, rebuilt shoe mine that now the King Tiger coming across maybe gonna take down these T-34s mines Cosco's just walking right through them On the other side Tiger makes some damage from the Jackson pack lining up a shot and the drain back on the axis 127 remaining Turning into a marathon match. Only two kills now for the Tiger. Tiger getting a little bit aggressive here. Interesting. 152 and SU85 switching sides, coming down. Pulling back. A bit risky going forwards without the sweep as well. I haven't seen many mines from uh, Bowel. I don't know if we've seen any, in fact. Oh, Puma going down to the 152 long range. It was still on high explosive as well. Oh, I'm piercing. Damage being exchanged. Another early activation of uh, Mark Vehicle and the 152 connecting for some huge damage. 152 coming in, hoping to get the kill here. King Tiger going on an awkward path, trying to retreat. Oh, bit of friendly fire, but the 152 bouncing a crucial shot would have been the killing blow. This penetrate still. 152. Oh, the King Tiger gets around the trees. 152 unable to finish the job. It all came down to that bounce. So I think with the bonus damage from the marked vehicle, 152 doing 240 damage per hit, I think that would have been the kill on the King Tiger there. Ooh, uh, Shrek's got down. And it's Shrek'd up really short. Did I miss some uh, Jackson combat up here? Looks like the Jackson went down as well. Next door that uh, King Tiger near death experiences. Looks like William Harrison gonna go for another Pershing. Stuka Barrage that time. Oh, eight kills. Really good one. Ready for action. Really get one after that barrage. Puma, ready for action. And another Puma. Hoping to take.
tame these T-34s. God's troops ready for action. Okay, smoke from the Axis side. King Tiger coming across to the far right again. Pineapple could go for a second boom here as well. Maybe another squad of folk screen is in order as well, needs those snares. Here we go, Puma. Getting some good hits. T34 backing away. King Tiger moving into the intercept. T34 stand no chance against the KT. KT getting a good hit in there. Oh, maybe you can kill this T34. If you remember, King Tiger doesn't have blitz anymore. He's got spearhead instead. With this level of veterancy. Blitz comes at our vet 4. So we can't speed after them. Here we go, Axis. Looking for the cap. 10 VPs remaining for the Allies. This could be it. They're mobilizing everything to the south. Huge infantry push from the Allies. Goes for a ram. Ooh, connects and results in heavy engine damage. Oh boy, terrible luck there for Pineapple the Fruit Dude. Can they hold on to the VPs long enough though? 8 VPs remaining, King Tiger in big trouble. Pack getting decrewed. King Tiger destroyed by all of the bazookas. Obers trying to hold on to the VP here. 6 remaining and then they retreat. I thought they'd try to stall out even if it cost them their lives. In comes the Tiger. Do a combo, but the 152's armor stands strong here, bouncing all the shots. But the Axis capping in the center now, allies leaving that undefended. Machine gun capping back there, in come the bazookas. 1vp remaining is not going to be enough. And there we go. Axis uh, squeeze out that victory. Oof, close, close match. Right down to the wire.